What's up guys? You know who it is, DJ Woo Pig. Thank you for coming back to the channel and coming back to another video at the shop. Today, I am going to do a video on getting started in live sound. Now, about a year ago, a little over a year ago now, I posted a video on getting started with Pro Audio, and that has since just blown up. It's my most viewed uh, video to date. I've got a whole series on that where I walk you through uh, my audio rig, my consoles, my monitors, the cabling to go along with it, truss, lights, all of it. Uh, feel free to check it out up here in the corner somewhere, but that, that series has really blown up but it also inspired a lot of questions with how do I get started in live sound not just the audio side but maybe I want to run um, audio for a band or I'm a DJ and want to be able to, to mic up uh, an acoustic guitar player or some string players at a ceremony I need more inputs what do I do so today I'm gonna walk you guys around the most basic but versatile rig I would ever uh, recommend this thing every weekend just about at my shop this same rig is going out in some sort of configuration and it has really become a uh, kind of a mainstay here when we're not taking out a big setup but we're doing something small maybe a four or five piece band and a DJ or a conference where we need multiple microphones this is the setup that I take out and it has worked wonders for me now before we get started with the gear aspect of it I do want to throw out like a super small disclaimer look guys um, if you're looking to get into this and doing it full-time the best place to learn is in person one-on-one -on -one one with another company or another audio engineer they're gonna be able to guide you through and show you you know kind of some tips and tricks on how to get started with basics of engineering audio uh, this means EQs gates compressors limiters effects all that stuff I don't have enough time to teach you these things there are some helpful tutorial videos on YouTube but the best way to learn is really getting one-on-one -on -one, hands-on with another audio engineer the best place to do that is with another production company or with your local church or with a band one of those three options is going to be the best fit uh, that's how I learned I signed on with a with a production company I just kind of learned the tips of the trade that sound company has since went out of business and that kind of paved the way where I can open up my shop and not really compete with them or go out and try to you know snake their gigs or something like that the sound live sound community the production community in general is a very small very tight-knit group of people and if you alienate yourself from the beginning you will never make a dime or at least it's going to be a lot harder for you to do so now before we get started with the backbones of this rig which is in the rack that's behind me I do want to let you know that you're going to need some things up front first of all you need a good high quality three-way system that consists of either two or three-way tops and a set of subs you, you just can't do anything hardly especially running a live band without these components there's lots of great options out there if you're looking for a three-way top i would recommend the evetx the qsc 153s uh, the jbl uh, three-way cabinets or even like something cheap like the mackie cabinets that i've done a review on here at the shop you're going to want to pair those with a nice solid subwoofer 18 inch sub uh, don't go any smaller don't get a 12 don't get a 15 it's just not going to give you what you're looking for it's not going to be able to produce those low notes uh, don't even look at getting a 12 or a 15 inch sub i would go with an 18 from one of the major manufacturers again ev jbl um QSC, it goes on and on. There's a lot of different ways that you can go. You can go expensive, you can go cheap. Um, I fall somewhere in the middle, and I think that's the best way to get started. Uh, buy once, cry once. Now, you probably can't afford like an L Acoustics or Meyer or Martin Rig, but you can probably afford something like a JBL, EV, or QSC. You're also going to need plenty of XLRs. My XLR of choice is either going to be a Whirlwind or a Hosa cable. There's also a company called Elite Core Audio that's right up the road from me they're great people I have a ton of their cables if you're looking for a good budget option this might be the way for you to go you're probably going to need an analog snake just to get all of the uh, the gear from the stage area to your rack so look at getting a 24 by 8 uh, stage box that's going to give you 24 out inputs with eight outputs so you can run your wedges your mixers your inner monitor system all that stuff um, and it's going to clean up your stage a lot you're also going to need some DIs for things like acoustic guitars keyboards bass guitars etc you're going to need something 
I started off with these units from Behringer. They are not the greatest. I'm just going to tell you that right off the top. They're kind of noisy, but hey, they got me started. I've since upgraded to something like a Radial Pro DI. Now, Radial is kind of the industry standard when it comes to DIs. Uh, anytime you see a live concert, they're, they're probably using a Radial DI, and this is actually their cheap, or yeah, this is their cheap version. It's like 99 bucks. Um, DIs, it's one of those things you you can go really expensive or you can go super basic but you need something if you go with the basic option please please for the love of god do not stay there this is a stepping stone to get you into something like this of course you're going to need things like extension cables and mic stands really there's a lot of things you're going to need just to get started with running a small four or five piece band um, and the list goes on and on of things you're going to need what i'm going to do for you is i'm going to put a list together that's in the description of this video it's also going to be in the top comment of this video that way you can kind of see what i would recommend or what you need to start off with and then we can go from there now once you've kind of gotten all of your basics down now it's time to talk about mixing and you know sound reproduction and the the backbone of this entire rig is this rack right here this rack consists of a uh, Furman power conditioner we've got a sure microphone distribution system we've got four uh, sure ULX s4 wireless microphones and then we've got the Behringer XR 18 along with the drawer that keeps all of our accessories our iPad our router things of that nature now getting started with the power conditioner you'll see that mine has a power readout so a lot of the times especially dealing with the smaller acts or smaller venues you're not gonna be able to cam in with three-phase power but it's always good to kind of know what power you're reading as soon as you plug something in that's why I recommend any power conditioner it doesn't have to be a Furman but generally any power conditioner that's got a power readout on there that way you kind of know what you're getting yourself into before you plug in a lick of gear it's always a good practice when you plug in your multimeter or your you know digital display power conditioner to see around 100 to 123 uh line voltage that's kind of what we're shooting for you can drop down to about 118 but anything under or over that you may run into some problems uh, your mileage may vary dropping below that i've got four channels of wireless microphones uh, you don't have to go with wireless i go with wireless just because a it cleans up the signal a lot it allows your uh your lead singer or your talent whoever to kind of float around the stage and not have to worry about tripping over mic cables it just provides something a little bit cleaner you can have a microphone out at front of house you know while you're giving instruction to the band when you are doing your sound check all of that stuff uh, wireless is probably the best way to go and a lot of this stuff as DJs or as musicians you probably already have but you just need to package it into a unit I recommend four channels that's gonna give you uh, a lead vocal two background vocals vocals or even three background vocals and then one for maybe a guest speaker or anything else that way everyone has their own independent channel when you're running four sets of wireless it's always a good idea to have something like an, an antenna combiner or distribution system otherwise the back of your rack is going to look pretty terrible and what it can allow you to do is either run paddle antennas or at least bring the antennas up to the front where you are running um, some half waves uh, you can get quarter waves if you want to but getting these antennas up and out front either on mic stands with paddles or half waves attached to the rack you don't want all of those antennas in the back because antennas they work as you know they work best when you have a clear line of sight and if you have your rack parked on the side of the stage it's gonna give a clear broadcast to those wireless uh, microphones that way you don't have any dropout surges of the feedback from wireless issues it's always a good idea to have a clear clean path of line of sight for your wireless microphone and then we're dropping down to the Behringer XR18 these are fantastic units especially for the money i own several of them several several of them and they go out all the time they're super versatile one it gives you 18 inputs now 16 of those are going to be the combo neutric jacks where you can plug in an xlr or a, uh, a quarter inch cable and then it gives you two quarter inch cables for 17 and 18 that's where you can plug in your ipod and don't eat up uh, you know any of your xlr channels it also gives you six aux outs or returns for you to be able to run your wedges and your monitors plus a main left right output it's also got a headphone jack so 
so you can listen to your mix as you are broadcasting it out. Being able to solo channels and kind of dial in a mix on a, a specific channel uh, is a great option. You know, a lot of people do it with the headphone out on the live sound console, but because uh, you may be working from side of house instead of front of house, having that headphone out is kind of critical in any live sound situation. One reason why I'm a big fan of the XR18 is because it's built with Behringer's Ultranet network. So if you don't want to have a lot of big bulky stage monitors, you can run their P16 system, which is kind of pricey, but it works wonders. You can let each member of the band dial in their own mix and you don't really have to mess with it all too much. A good thing about this Ultranet monitoring system is it pairs up with, with uh, speakers with built-in Ultranet such as the Turbo Sound IQ series. It works out really good. How that works is you can essentially send one Ultranet Cat5 out to the first wedge and daisy chain all those wedges through. That way you don't eat up your six aux outs on the front. It also has a USB in. So what that is going to allow you to do is multi-track record everything that you have coming out of your mixer into a, a software processor, a DAW such as Reaper. That's what I use. It's super cheap and it's very great for, you know, for the price point. There's a lot of more expensive DAWs out there such as, you know, Pro Tools and etc. cetera. Um, but I use Reaper. It works really good when multi-tracking. You can record your sets and then bring them back and have them tracked out one through 18. Uh, it works out super great, especially when you can, you know, if you're working with a live band and they want to know how they sounded or, or how the show went, um, you can record it straight out and hand it to them on a USB drive, you know, and or be able to practice and, and use that uh, that session to practice your live sound skills whenever you don't have a show. You can set up you know, a couple speakers, run this through your DAW software, and really dive into the effects, um, the, the processing, the EQs, the gates, the, you know, the limiters, all that stuff without actually having to be sitting in front of the band. I will say if you're going to be using the XR18, you need to invest in a decent router. So it's got a router built in. Don't even think about using that built in router. It's just not that great. You know, you can use it in your office or at home if you want to. But as soon as a room gets crowded full of, you know, the 2.4 gigahertz stuff and the 5G networks, the router really leaves a lot, a, a lot to be desired. Um, it has caused several failures if you go on any of the forums uh, on the XR18 forums they just tell you right off the jump invest in a decent router I picked this one up at Walmart it's a it's a Netgear Nighthawk I think I may have maybe 150 bucks in this thing um, you can also use it as an access point if you if you want to use like a uh, ubiquity access point it works fine just don't rely on the internal router because it will fail you it's failed me so I'm telling you do not do not rely on the internal router. Pick up a cheap Netgear from Walmart. Now, we talked about the, the, the main sound output earlier using a three-way top and a set of subs, uh, but what about monitors? Anytime you're playing with a band, the band needs to be able to hear themselves over the live PA. So what does that look like? If you're starting out, I recommend going with an option of a, uh, of a headphone amp or personal monitor. It's got an XLR in, so you're going to come out of the aux output into the input on this headphone amp, and it's going to be able to allow that band member to plug in a set of headphones and use those as like an in-ear. <laughs> what? Sorry. It's going to allow that band member to plug in just a regular old set of headphones. Hopefully they've got something at least like a Shure SC215, not just like the over the ear. Um, it's going to allow them to plug in and, you know, control the main volume. And then you're going to adjust what they're getting in their wedge individually, or not wedge, what they're getting to their mix individually from uh, the console via the X-Air app. Downside to that is if your band has never played with inner monitors, then it's going to be a totally new experience for them. A lot of people are used to playing with wedges. If you decide to go that route, uh, 
you can probably use a standard you know powered speaker like a lot of people do nowadays um, a lot of them have the 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 cut option in them where they will lay up like a monitor so you can use a speaker such as a zlx uh, an ekx etx any of those speakers from ev jbl doesn't matter uh, where you get them a lot of those have the option of a monitor and even better a lot of these speakers especially the newer ones have built-in dsp where they've got an automatic monitor set in the DSP that's going to allow um, those internals to, to cut the problematic frequencies so that's one less thing that you have to deal with. If you're running monitors the stage volume is probably going to be a lot louder which leads to problematic things with uh, frequencies and feedback. It's just a whole nother can of worms. Again that's a that's a conversation that you need to have uh, with your mentor or in your shop learning. Please don't go to a, a gig and try to learn on the gig. You will fail and we will laugh. So now that we've got our rack situation figured out, the really the last piece of the puzzle is the microphone. So we've got our wireless microphones for vocals. What do we do about instrument microphones? Off the jump, you need to try to plug in as much stuff direct as possible. So uh, keyboards, bass, um, if you're using electronic drums, that'd be cool. Uh, but as, as much stuff as you can get inputted directly, uh, that's going to save you a lot of money on the front end as far as microphones go. But eventually you're going to have to cough up some dough and spend some money on some microphones. Now there's cheap options when it comes to instrument mics, but I would say again, buy once, cry once. You don't have to get the top of the line uh, Neumann or some crazy microphones to, to be able to mic up a drum kit, uh, but I wouldn't recommend you know brands such as Pile Pro or CAD. Uh, a lot of these brands that you see on like the, the budget uh, side of microphones on uh, a lot of manufacturers' websites. If you go to you know Guitar Center or musician's friend you're gonna see you know a seven piece mic kit for a hundred and twenty dollars and it probably sounds better if you don't mic it at all at that point go with something like a, a sure pg 56 series for your drum mics um, they've got a, a pg kit for drum mics if you're gonna be miking guitar cabinets or you know a keyboard uh, cabinet stuff of that nature i would always say go with the trusty old sm57 they're 100 bucks i own personally probably 20 sm57s because it's really the swiss army knife of microphones you can use it for vocals instruments horns it doesn't matter you can you can tune it the way uh, that you want it to sound and dial it in for that specific instrument when it comes down to microphones what goes in must come out so if you've got a, a, a an all-star singer singing into a crappy microphone it's not going to sound good coming out no matter how much you tune it or tweak it uh, at least get some budget stuff that's you know that's somewhat decent I would say go with anything from Shure or AKG Audio Technica but when you get off in those uh, those cheap brands uh, they're gonna sound cheap and thin and tinny and we don't want that so you've got the meat and potatoes of what you need to get started. You need a good audio system, you need a good rack with plenty of inputs and outputs, you need monitors, you need mic stands, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, a lot of you guys ask, how do you get the gig? And that's the toughest thing out of all of it. If you've got money, you can buy any of this gear, but that doesn't mean that you are going to get any gigs and it doesn't mean that you're going to be very good at them when you do get them. Uh, so what I recommend is starting off with a band. If you're in a band or uh, uh, maybe have a have a friend that's in a band that's getting started kind of try to grow with that band You're gonna be able to stay with the talent for uh, a foreseeable amount of time So you can really get comfortable and kind of know their tendencies and things of that nature Whenever you're getting started trying to learn the live sound aspect and also you, you can be booking gigs with them So you're not just going out solely trying to find live sound jobs also, a good place to look is with the church. Uh, a lot of churches need engineers. They need volunteers. They need people that want to learn and want to grow. Uh, it doesn't, you know, I, I don't care what your, you know, current church religion situation is, but I do know there are a lot of opportunities in places of worship. The last thing is getting on with a production company. Again, um, the production field is a very close, tight-knit group of people, so kind of fight your battles when it comes to that. They're going to sniff it out pretty fast if you're just there to learn and, and take that knowledge and go off and try to start your own thing. Um, I will say that I've been doing it now roughly 10 years, and I'm still like way down on the totem pole, even in my own market when it comes to live sound events. It just takes a while to get these jobs. You buy a small rig, then you buy a bigger rig, and then you buy a bigger rig, and then um, you can go 
the sky's the limit essentially um, it's going to cost you some money and it's going to cost some time because it's something that just does not come by easy especially in such a volatile industry and that's going to be it for today's video i hope you learned something if you got any questions as always leave them down in the comment section below if you want to dive a little bit deeper into uh you know what it kind of takes to get started feel free to shoot me an email i'll get back with you just as soon as i can more videos coming up on the channel if you are watching this like when it comes out we're dealing with the coronavirus issue uh here in america so all of our gigs are kind of done so if you've got something that you want to see leave it down in the comment section i've got plenty of time to shoot some dope content and on that note i'm gonna go uh i'm gonna go cry because all my jobs are gone later